Today we're going to talk about uh, designing a character portrait and I'm going to run through a few for you right now. Uh, once you get through the tutorial you'll be able to create any kind of character you want from more realistic looking things like this one to fantasy things. we we'll are focus here on the face and I'm going to show you how to get through figures in a later demo to silly things like this. Both of the portraits on this use the same technique. To more serious and spooky ones like this guy. Or the classic hot chick in the post-apocalyptic world of the future. Uh, one of my favorite portraits actually that I've created. To just plain creepy. This one is a really good example of the technique, so if you'll think right now and start using your head, notice the shape of the eye socket, a single shape for the bottom of the nose, shape of the mouth. Uh, we'll talk about it later and it's going to be worth your trouble. Here's a fairly recent one that's unfinished. Same thing. Here's one I quite like and I recall that I created this one while I was talking to a student and it just kind of worked out. But again, this is a three-quarter portrait. It's the demo that I'm going to do. I won't be pulling the shoulder up over or doing anything fancy, but as you can see, there's one, two, three, four, five elements of the face that we're going to get under control and I'm going to show you how to do it. Another portrait. We're looking at two portraits now. This was another demonstration I did in class. A student, it's not my design, it's a student design. And I was helping uh, that guy, Chris Tim, uh, to figure out how to make this character look correct. And then this is not one I did for myself, working with displacement mapping, which we'll talk about in class, and also trying to get an interesting portrait rolling. Here's another one I called Fairy Takes a Spin. Uh, same thing locating the elements, kind of use a brush for the hair. Here's an earlier one I did for uh, a kind of actually hero of the future, but I was really interested in getting some face paint onto this character. To the ridiculous, like this guy. Uh, just a sphere with exactly what we're going to do in our demo today on top of it. And even Frankenchicken uses the same technique as this, what I call bad cardinal. We'll put the three of these up together so you can see how they work in a full figure where I'm just locating elements and creating a symbol that's useful for shadow planes, shape of the eye socket, shape of the mouth, location of the ear when it's appropriate. And even in Frankenchicken, it's the same technique exactly with light and dark. Once you can accomplish this, you can create anything that you want to create. And finally, this straight ahead portrait of one of my students. It's the same stuff. So we're going to get started uh, right away. Okay, let's break this down if we can into some elements. Here's a pretty good reference uh, image, the way I like to illustrate and paint. We're going to start with the eye, and I'm going to do a frontal eye first. And I'm just grabbing this darker color. This is the socket, or the shape of the socket, in which the eye sits. You can imagine the nose down here somewhere. And that's what you want to come at first. It's bounded by the eyebrows, and then by the bones of the cheek, and so on and so forth. Inside of that, I'm going to come to a slightly darker color, a diamond shape. And this is going to represent the eye. And you can see I'm not getting crazy about this stuff. I'm just painting it. Uh, roughly the way uh, uh, I perceive it and it's going to be uh, generally going to be a diamond shape with an axis from across like this not straight above up and down like that. Inside this with my darker color I'm going to create a sensation of an eyeball and then I'm going to start grabbing even darker colors in this case I'm going to grab them from my reference not really a reference, just the image I have here so you can see where I'm headed with all this stuff. And I'm just scribbling it in. Then I will take the, for the white of the eye, I will take the value of the lightest part of the skin 
as, as opposed to getting white. I'm a little more than I want to be here. I'm going to drop my opacity down. There we go. Back to black. If I have color in mind for the eye, I'm going to put it in between the pupil and the edge of the eye. So let's suppose that <clears throat> I want to have uh, green eyes, something like that maybe. Really interesting green. I'm going to pull it in right about there. And then all I need is a highlight. It's going to go here in this picture. And I'm going to couch inside that highlight with a brighter bright like that. And now it's just a question of drawing. So I'm going to finish by putting some specifics in here. Sensation of some lashes and an eyebrow. And I don't want to have a uh, I'm not really sure what color I want the eyebrow to be, so I'm going to come with this kind of medium value. And I'm going to run it right along here. You can make your eyebrows, of course, any shape you want. And when you want to groom them a little bit, you just take adjacent colors and groom them back. The last thing I'm going to do is look for the darkest element of the entire eye area, which is going to be right there, right in there closest to the nose and possibly suggest an eyelid, either by drawing the fold like I just did, or by taking a lighter color and suggesting the eyelid in this fashion. That's a frontal eye. If you're in a three-quarter situation, you have to recognize that all the shapes change a little bit. They get compressed from left to right. So here's my socket, and I'm just altering it. You can see it very clearly in this eyebrow, moving around like that. Then the eye inside, <clears throat> and since I'm using, I have a transparent brush. I thought I did. Now I do. Since I have a transparent brush, I can just keep going overlapping things. Now the eye shape is moving from this diamond shape to something a little more extreme, like this. And it's very important in these three-quarter views to do this, or it won't look right if you don't get that compression. Again, I can use the eyebrow uh, up here to sort of define. I've got uh, a dark value here that I can work with, so I'm going to come down here, the shadow under the eyelid, the eyeball itself, that little bit of lash on the side. I'll go a little bigger here with the lash. And this angle is going to come more severely down. Everything else is going to stay uh, work in the range that we worked. That's This is the near eye, not the far eye. That's a different animal. So here we are and I'm painting away and I've kind of got my stuff noted. And then I have to get to this other eye on the other side of the nose. And that's actually simpler in many ways. Let's assume we'll take some dark here. We'll paint this element of the nose. And we'll assume the nose is down here. Then we just take this um, value of this eyebrow. We're going to do a little drawing. From the other side, the eyebrow comes up and it actually wraps around behind, I'll make a little arrow, behind the head. So that's what I'm suggesting here. And then this eye is a triangle. It, for all intents and purposes, it comes right up to the bridge of the nose, which is about here. I didn't paint it in here because it wasn't necessary. I had a beautiful brush that day, I remember. I don't know what it was, but it worked so well. And then I'm just going to paint with my darks. just like I did before, and paint an entirety of shape. This shape over here, if I were to do it in black and white with a small brush, is this turn, it's the nose. If I'm drawing, this is the way that gets executed. It comes in like this where the eye sits and out. And then the eye really just sits like this. So that's basically the shape that I'm, that I'm creating here. Uh, but I'm not, I'm not drawing a lot. I'm just using the values and tones 
and a fairly large brush. Again, as big a brush as I can manage is what I want you to paint with all the time. And then I just have to line things up. Get this about where it goes. Perhaps a suggestion of the color of the eye coming from somewhere. Some very dark And again, uh, just to give you a sensation of how this breaks down, the cheek comes out like this. I'll draw it with a small black line so you can see. This way in, out, and then back down. Just as I've done here, you see the triangular shape. And then inside that shape, you see uh, a smaller triangle that's the eye itself. So to sort of illustrate that a little bit better. There we are. A big shape and then a small shape inside it. And again, I found that anytime I get these little dots of light, it starts to look a little more real. That's how the eyes go. Let's do something else. When we're painting the nose, I'm going to grab my value again and make a bigger brush and just sort of smoosh down some skin color so I have a background to draw upon. In a frontal view, I view the, I think of the nose as, as one of three shapes. Uh, this is a three-quarter view we're looking at here, but it's not that different uh, to create these things. So I'm going to grab this darker value. I'm going to work at a middle opacity like 40, 50. The first shape is a downward turning shape like this. I'm going to go a little bit bigger. The second shape is just scrubbing right across and the third shape is slightly upward turning. What we're painting is the shadow of the bottom of the nose. So what I'll do now is I'll use, uh, since it's a transparent brush, I can just overlap it. And what I'm going to get is a slightly darker side. So I'm suggesting that the light source is coming from about that direction. And one side of the shadow underneath the nose is going to be darker than the other side. The next thing I'm do, going to do, and I routinely do this, is just spot the light coming up from the tip of the nose. I'm going to have to make that a little brighter so you can see it on your monitor. Hopefully that's bright enough. Maybe I should come up another notch. Here we go. This is kind of important because this tip defines the actual shape of, the, of the, the, the part that we think of as the nose, the end part. And then what I'm going to do is go even darker. I've got a nice dark red color here. And I can create a sensation of the nostril. I'm going to go darker still because it's very hard to see right now. Nostrils uh, have all kinds of shapes. That's not one of them. So there's one there, there's one there. I can make a slightly different shape here. And I'll make a different shape here as well. That's basically all I really have to do. I can do more and I will for you. Uh, just to show you how how we fluff this out in a painting. What I'm going to do is just bring in the nasal crease. I'm going to push a little harder on a plain break right here. And this break where the nose meets the philtrum. Philtrum's coming down this way. I can put a shadow all the way under the nose falling onto the face, but I'm not going to do that in this demonstration. I'm just exaggerating some of these things, making sure they're easy to see. Defining, I'll do it down here as well, same thing, little shadow core, maybe a shadow core in the middle, filter from coming down. And then all I'm doing, as you see here, is I'm just working between lights and darks and I'm trying to uh, get it across what you're looking at. So each time, oops, I grabbed the wrong stuff. Each time I do this and make a pass at it, I get a little better definition. You can use any colors that you want. I'm staying in this orange key uh, today. I think it'll make my life a little bit simpler. Here's a little red. I think I'll go ahead and explain what I meant about a shadow underneath the nose. It would look something like that. And then I'm going to determine where the shadow would fall, what the shape of the shadow would be, just by cutting cutting back into it. 
kind of like this. We'll assume it's falling a little bit across the philtrum and so on. So it's pretty easy. Frontal noses are actually very straightforward things to do. And you can see how I can, as I work shape and, and go back and forth with the tool, I can get more and more crisp and more and more of a vision of what that nose might be. I'll, put, I'll bring this up a little bit so you can see where I'm headed here. And then I'll finally highlight it, in this case with white. And believe me, the shape of this changes radically how people perceive the shape of the nose. If it's small, if it's pointy, if it's not pointy. That's, how, that's really going to make a difference, this little end piece right there on how the nose gets perceived. A three-quarter nose is actually, uh, in many ways, a simpler animal. I don't know if you can tell just by looking, but give myself a little more room here. <clears throat> the three-quarter nose is going to be defined by the eye shape and we just talked about that and also by where you have light hitting them. But we're going to start it the same way with light on the bottom of the nose. And you just make a determination about how much of the nose you can see. So I'm just doing a suggestion. We're actually looking at the near side uh, in this drawing situation of the nose. I'm going to put a nostril in there. And what you're going to see on the other side is potentially just the curve of the nose. And you might have a su small suggestion of a nostril, you might not. It just depends on the drawing situation. Here's the tip. I'm going to define that a little bit, come underneath it now, and I'll work the philtrum all the way down. In this case, I'll work it all the way down to the mouth. Oops, that was a bad move. Fix that. So that you can see where we're headed with this. As I come to the mouth, I'm going to go back to my dark value in this case, just to show you where we are. And now I need a little something smaller to kind of get at this mouth shape. And that's more of a three-quarter mouth uh, view of the mouth. Let me put it in red just to make sure we all are on the same page here. And again, like every other shape, I'm grooming from the outside. And the thing about the mouth, as I'll discuss, is I don't tend to do a lot of work on the lower lip. Even if somebody has dark red lips, I'm pretty cautious about this. So I'll give a suggestion of it, but I won't do a lot because it destroys your illusion if you outline a bunch of things. So three-quarter nose is pretty simple. To do it as an outline shape, what have I got here? Um, it's basically this uh, with a nostril inside it and then a sensation of the other nostril on the other side. And then you just work it to get whatever kind of shape that you want to get. Okay. Let's do another, the mouth. So I'll bring up a layer. I'll get my big brush, grab some flesh color here. Oops, where's my new layer? There we go. Mouths are pretty simple in uh, frontal view, and there's a bunch of ways to do it. You can see the shape of this brush. It's just an oval shape, and I'm going to use as big a brush as I can manage to, to create everything on the face. So here's a triangle. This brush is slightly pressure sensitive, so as I push to one side or another, uh, I can let up on the brush and I can get uh, a little gradient there. I'm essentially, uh, let me groom this a little from the outside so you can see what I'm doing. I'm essentially making a triangle on one side, just like in figure drawing one, triangle on the other side. Whoops, went a little far. There's that, and then I'm going to take the same value, and I'm going to show my viewers the 
volume of the lower lip by creating the shadow that's under the lower lip. Now, to get it precise, uh, I'll put a little filter in there too. And the bottom of the nose is up here somewhere. Okay, it might be a little low, but I'm not drawing a nose right now, so we're not going to worry about it. Okay, the next step for me, maybe the first step sometimes, is to get this shape between the lips created. And this can be any shape that you want. I'm not really in the color zone I want to be, so I'm going to improve that a little bit. That's better. And again, I tend to try to break these lines up. I try to vary the weight of the lines and so on and so forth. Um, the next thing I'm going to do is darken a little bit in the corners because that's where the lips are the most full. Darken a little bit in the middle and a little bit on the lower lip. I tend not to paint the lower lip, so if you have to get um, dark red lips or any color lips and you want to go dark with them, <coughs> excuse me, I'll caution you, you have to be careful with this lower lip. Let's move into the red just to show you. So I'm going to start coloring this in red. I'm going to assume a light source, so one side is going to be darker than the other side. Light is going to hit this in a whole bunch of different ways. And now I'm just going to suggest that the lower lip is also colored red. I'm a little dark here, so let's bring it up so you can see. There we go. And maybe a little bit over here. You break this lower lip shape up with light. If you're going into the red zone, uh, you've got to break it up, or any dark color you got to start breaking that up. Uh, or it's going to read as a graphic shape, and that's not what you want. So I'm grabbing uh, sort of reflective colors, shiny things like that, just to break this up. And I'm going to put some at a low opacity. I can get away with this. I'm going to put a little lighter skin right there, right here. I'm using this to define the mouth. And I have a pretty satisfying mouth already. Again, there's plenty you can talk about. You can, you can look at books. You can look at each other. You can look at my book on figure drawing. I teach you a lot about how to get around these mouths. But basically, this is it. I'll put a little shadow here now. And a little shadow here. That's a little puffy skin there right around the mouth. And that is a frontal mouth. Now, if it's a guy, it's going to be thinner lips. If it's a monster, he may have no lips at all, but he's going to have a, a, a dark upper lip and a lighter lower lip. So if we move into the zone of guyhood, what we're looking to do is just flatten this out. Because guys tend to have thinner lips on their mouth and even a thinner lower lip like this. Oops. I'll pull this shadow up now, like that. Pretty easy stuff to do. The colors, that's up to you. And you can create any kind of color you want uh, for these characters. A three-quarter lip is the same thing. You have to remember, we just talked about it, that the lip itself is a triangle. I'm going to go to 100% here. A triangle, triangle mid-zone, mid, midpoint between the lips, and then a shadow. There's a plane break here, and there's one here that goes like that. When you see a three-quarter view, if this character were to turn their head in that direction to the left, what you're going to see left is from this plane break over. And this is going to appear much longer than this part over here which is going to appear much shorter. Maybe I should paint that in a different color so you see the, really see the difference. So let's turn it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to create this. I'm here now and down to here. Then I'm going to come back up this other edge of the filtrum and I'm just going to curve it in like that. I'm all the way to this plane break now. 
And I've discovered that I don't really need to do much from that point on. Uh, a lot of times I'll just signify where the other corner of the mouth might be and I'll signify the lower lip. Uh, the plane break of the lower lip is going to be this right down from this plane break right here. So it's going to be about here where the lip starts to go into shadow. And then again, just as I did before, I'm still going to put a shadow under the lower lip. And in this case, I'm just going to drop in a little bit. I normally won't have a line there. I think you can probably figure that out for yourselves. Again, I'm going to go dark in the corner. I'm going to go darker in the middle. I'm going to put a little light skin above the lip. and maybe above where there we carry a little fat here. I'll start working this back and creating a particular kind of form. And that's really it. I'm going to go much darker now though. So let's come in here. Let's get way over into this red zone if you want to see real red lips or any, as I said, any color that you prefer. Now's my chance. I go pretty dark. I'm going to do it carefully down here. Little shadow. Now I can pull this over. Ooh, that was terrible. Come this way. Just a little bit. And now I'll start grooming back from the other side. Don't need all of that. Don't need all of this. I need some light in here. I really want to break this shape up. Maybe a little light working across there. And uh, if I'm shaded here, then this side of the filtrum is going to be shaded and the other side is going to be lit somewhat. And you can go as far as you want to go here. I'm going to come down into this red zone. I'm going to drop it down even further. I'm going to make a nice little tight brush so I can really define. And I'm in business, so we have a frontal mouth that we discussed and a three-quarter mouth. Those are the features, the eyes, nose, and mouth for frontal and three-quarter. I'm not doing profile. I recommend that you get good at this before you push on to profiles. They're different. Uh, they're hard, harder in some ways, easier in others. As far as the ear, you can see it's a basic shape. It's essentially uh, a triangle. And then I cut this little bit off and, and just groom it. I don't get too worked up about what's inside the ear. I just suggest it and I recommend that you do that too. So here's the mouth. You can see me modifying it like crazy. You can see the modification on the eyes, on the nose, this nice little accidental piece of light that just sort of happened there. Um, and so on. The hair, it's a shape and I can pursue it or not pursue it. I put little wispy elements uh, around the hair just to suggest that uh, some of it was flying away. And that's how that works. I wanted a character in this case, I guess, with, uh, with white hair. If you want to see the progression of this young lady, she started here with a very simple drawing. You don't have to do this if you don't want to. And then I just started working. You can see the, the mouth go in, a little suggestion of the eyes, a whole bunch of work to get to this point. Um, you're welcome to go back and review. And that's all I wanted to say for this piece. OK, so we're going to use some of those principles. And look at me blazing along here. I actually don't paint this fast. I'm building, I'm going times three here, so relax. You can see there's a head shape, there's a neck shape, and there's a shoulder shape. And I'm working with a about a 40% transparent brush uh, in one color orange, and then selected a slightly darker orange to get some of the locations of both eye sockets, the bottom of the nose, the upper lip, and the ear. And now I'm just drawing, trying to get an edge in here, get a few landmarks. The eyebrows show where the top of the eye socket is, build the mouth a little more, shadow underneath the lower lip. And now I'm, I'm, the goal here for me is to get as many colors and values that I'm going to use into the painting uh, fairly rapidly. You can see me going right over to white, getting the tip of the nose uh, highlight there, 
started so I can see the shape of the tip of the nose. It's real skinny now. Lots of stuff is wrong. Don't worry about it. As I draw the eyelid, I start to get an eye and then I come back dark and I get the eye a little better. More shadows, the ear, the shadow under the neck, the shadow under the nose, all the way down to the lip. It's starting to look like a person. We've been working now for about uh, six minutes in real time, I think, four and a half minutes. A little white or light blue outline actually, just experimentally to try to define. I like the blue so much I put it in as a highlight on the cheek, on the nose. I put it everywhere I could think of to put it because I just normally use white for this. And I did like the blue, which is a lighter version of my background color. And you can see me blasting along trying to form parts of the ear, parts of the eye, and now a much darker element here to get a little bit of definition onto the eye simply so I can see where I am. I've got this dark so I can go in here and use, uh, use it to create a, the beginning of a nostril, corner of the mouth where it's the darkest, the division between the lips where it's the darkest also. And now I'm settling into a dark red color, reddish, to really define a few things. You can see me testing the width of the brush periodically, see if, I, see if I'm where I want to be, creating definition in the nostril, the philtrum, the shadow underneath the nose, a little more red. Just trying, you know, to create a mouse shape. I've broadened it out now. I decided at one point I wanted her to smile a little bit or seem more relaxed, more generous mouth in this case. <coughs> Excuse me. Shadow core on the nose. You'll see me come back to that. I'm putting a shadow core at the middle of the nose underneath and I'm putting a shadow core where the ridge of the nose transitions into the bottom of the nose. All the rest of this stuff is me redefining things trying to decide on shape or, or more accurately really um, let the shape show me uh, or show itself to me because I really don't have anything in mind. I knew I was going to uh, paint a, a woman, uh, smaller features, more fun for me, easier for me to do, but I could just as easily paint a man or a monster using this technique. I'm just finding location of features and I'm looking for up plane and down plane periodically I'm drawing, you can see, with a smaller brush just to help myself along and occasionally I have that small brush in my hand, I just check it. Will this help if I define these features with a, with a really small narrow line? So I'm getting happier about the mouth. Now I'm doing that crucial inside corner of the eye, just above the eye, which is the darkest part of that uh, eye socket, generally speaking. I've got a nice color on my brush, so I'm experimenting with it. When you get a color, or whether it's darker or lighter or warmer or cooler, push it around, use it in parts of the face, and, and just check it out. See if it's going to work for you. I'm coming back to the eyelids now. I want to see them a little better. And small brush in my hand, I'm defining some more specific shape of the eye. And at this point, I decided I'd made the eye too small. And then I spend the rest of the drawing trying to figure out if I put it in the right place or not. That's not your problem. That is my problem. But I'm just going to keep defining. And I decided at a certain point I wanted her looking well over to her left, the right of the picture, so I moved her eyeball. I think getting a person looking straight at you, it works, but I think sometimes I get more of a sense that something is happening, this character is involved in something. If I move that eye this way or that way, and my default is usually to get uh, the eye, uh, the near eye pointed at the outside corner, so she, she or he uh, looking away from me or I'll make them little slits, or I'll open them wide up, something to get some kind of expressiveness uh, into it. And it's kind of fun. You just move the uh, pupil and iris, you move them this way, you move them that way, and you see if it's any good. Now I'm constructing an eyebrow, and you can see it's a mess right now, and I'm not sweating it. I know that I can fix it by painting over it from the outside, from the inside, 
working it this way and that way, testing the water on the other side to define the nose, define the cheek a little better, get, get my lights back, and I had that beautiful kind of uh, orange color, and I thought, well, I'll try it on the near side and see how I like it. And constantly smoothing things out, and this is not a smudge brush that you're looking at, it's just me finding an adjacent color, getting down to 35 or 40 percent transparent brush, and moving from here to there. Now I'm putting a little highlight in the eye, so a little white, and then inside that white I'll couch a much brighter white to get that sparkle. And while I'm in here working super tight, very small brush, I'm doing some of the uh, some of the things that I can't do with the larger brush. You can see me saying, well, I wonder what it would look like if this was darker. I'll darken the nostril a little. And then right back to blending. Again, once again, trying to get that eyelid back. And that's a neat trick. You can form it uh, just like that. You just make a dark area for the entire eye socket and draw the eyelid in with the lighter area. Some light skin just above the upper lip and then in the filtrum. Reinforce the shadow core, as you see, and that spot right where the nose meets the upper lip. I decided to go a little darker and I really like that look. So I'm looking for lights, I'm looking for darks. Now I'm going to fiddle with the shadow underneath the lower lip. And you can look at photos, you can look at yourself. There's all kinds of shapes for that shadow. As I recall, I fussed over the uh, left side in the in the painting, the actual right side of the character's face for a long time, wasn't really content. I felt like the character I was making was very athletic, seemed f fairly severe, and I kept wondering if that's really what I wanted to do. So here I am working with that light blue again to define the face, and as long as I've got it on my brush, testing, seeing if I like it here or like it there better. It may work for some highlights. Broadening out the neck, dropping it down, and then I realized one thing I had not done was get that little diagonal of skin just under the chin. And I wish now, looking at it, that I had taken that a little further, because it really did soften and feminize uh, the piece. Now I'm thinking about uh, hair, and I noticed in my original drawing I'd almost created a hairstyle accidentally. So you can see me with a line tool on a new layer, just following what I did. There's a quick test to see if I liked long hair better, decided against it. And now just kind of hurriedly really putting hair in. I decided in this drawing I wouldn't go blonde, which is my sort of go-to with a light-complected, sort of orange-complected person. And I was going to go dark. While well, I had dark in my brush, I'm fixing a few other things. As usual, getting myself confused between this layer and that layer, the hair layer and the face layer. But I'll drop it down anyway after a while, once I get it sort of close. Normally what I do is just block it in. Uh, this testing here you can see I tried a bigger haircut, didn't like it, brought it right back out. Now I'm experimenting with some oranges in there to get a red tone or a brown tone. Now I'm experimenting with some light brown colors to see what I like. And then right back to something darker. I'm just testing, experimenting. If you do paint black hair, my suggestion is that you paint most of it blue first. Because you're going to need those highlights, uh, which are going to be blue and then, and then very pale blue. Um, so put the blue in and then paint the black over it. You can see that I'm every occasionally I have a color on my brush. I'm putting starting this with the shadow underneath the hair in the forehead, and I thought, well, I wonder if that'll help me uh, on her face. So once again, in the wrong layer, but it's not the end of the world. And blending a little bit, and really, really, uh, almost desperately experimenting with color, but it's not, it's not uh, life threatening to experiment. You know, do it. Uh, push this here, push that there. As I recall in this drawing, and I wish I'd finished, uh, made it a little more finished, I never got 
really small with the brush in the hair. You never want to paint lots and lots of little hairs, but I probably could have put more of a suggestion. You see me here sort of defining, uh, once again drawing, and then getting a terrible eraser. Not really the right eraser for this, but it's okay. I left that little notch in the hair just to see if it did anything, and it didn't, so out it comes. And now I'm painting back in with a, with a more appropriate tool, getting some highlights going. This is not a hairstyle that you're going to all decide uh, to go copy in your own life or in your own work, but it's easy and I wanted you to see it's just a sculptural element, uh, a group of lights and darks. This very intense white outline is something I experiment with periodically just to give my, I do it in vehicles, I do it in all kinds of situations, but I'm just testing the water here to see if it's going to work on my character. And one thing it does do is it softens some of the edges. So it's not bad, especially for a concept drawing. Here I am once again worrying that side of the face and wondering should I cut it down and then saying to myself that's a terrible idea. Going to a clear brush, which is an eraser getting it back the way it was. Bring highlights back in. Everything to define the form. Is light hitting it? Is it hitting it a lot? Is it hitting it a little? The cheek, the bridge of the nose, the tip of the nose, the lower lip, the tip of the chin, that area just above and inside uh, between the two eyebrows on the forehead, that whole area above your forehead pushes out a little bit. Uh, I did notice at a certain point that a little light would be appropriate where her jawline drops. You can see that I'm pretty careful back there. I don't do a lot of line work. Uh, I also put in some collarbones, the clavicle, just to show aspect where her uh, the way her shoulders were aligned with her face and neck. I decided I'm going to try to glam it up a little bit and get a little more aggressive with color. So I grab a color brush, a brush set to color, and I just start going all over the place with it. About this point I think I realize I'm in two layers. Uh, and quickly I'll drop it down to one so I can do some of this. You saw the blue under the nose didn't work at all. Um, so out it came. I just undid it with a, a brush set to red. Now I'm back in a normal mode and I'm just painting away. Defining things. I decided I would make her a little more um, mysterious looking by closing her eyes a little bit. At least that's my interpretation of mysterious. I'm coming back in. I'm going real dark up there so it looks like a lot of makeup. And this is where it can be fun. You know, I'm not pushing this really hard. But I am trying to get color involved and, and as I said I'm not being super aggressive. In a normal design situation at this point I'd be make I would have made a copy of my original painting and I'd be going extremely hard at it uh, to change this character. You know, she, she could have started out as our hero and maybe now I'm testing the water uh, to see if she could potentially be a different kind of character or a different character in the story altogether. And it, as I said before, this is the point where I normally push hard, but I'm just pushing a little bit here, changing her eyes to green, moving them over still a little more. A lot of mascara on this person. Have a nice sculpture look and she's starting to look like a different person. I have this beautiful dark on my brush so I'm just gonna put it where the lips are heaviest in the corner in the middle. A little more definition here and there. Basically we're done.